Oh, the lighting is delightful. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then thank you so much for tuning in. Apologies for the lighting. I don't have any like external lighting set up, so we're just kind of dealing with the um, ever-changing clouds outside. <laughs> um, so we've definitely got good lighting over here. And it's a bit dark over here, but please bear with. So I did have a nice, um, nicely made bed not long ago, but Billy has commandeered one of the pillows and decided to make that as a little napping area. Never mind. So this video has been quite highly requested, both on my channel and on my Instagram, and I thought I would finally sit down and film it. And it is basically how I got my hair to go from this to this in just 12 weeks. Now, I I myself am shocked by, by the improvement in it. I feel like I finally got a routine down which um which works for me and which doesn't take too much out of my day so I don't really need to think about it too much. Yeah, I thought I'd just share some of my secrets and my tips as to how this has happened. Let me try and fix this lighting because I'm actually, it's, it's not working for me. <laughs> how about that? Are we a bit dark? It's okay, we can deal with that, okay. So I have got a couple of notes on my iPad. So if you see me looking down, that is what I'm looking at. Um, but basically I thought I could go over like how I got to the position that I was in on the before photo because trust me my hair has not been in good shape for a long long time like I'm talking years so let me talk about how we got into the position that I was in what I was doing about it and um what I'm now doing so I've got to say, so I started actually dyeing or should I say bleaching my hair when I was quite young. I think I was still in high school, so which I think is kind of a normal age for like girls to start to want to like bleach their hair and change their hair colours and things. I'm, I was really trying to like, you know, express myself. Also, I thought by <laughs> by getting blonde highlights um, and that is where my kind of journey with bleaching my hair started um don't get me wrong it was it was very kind of like controlled as you were as it were like i just kind of got it done like every so often and i wasn't really like you know doing too much i was just getting some highlights here and there i think when i turned about 17 was when i started to really bleach my hair i don't think i was actually going to the hairdressers too much at that point i was actually using like box dyes which i think have a little bit of bleach in them but it wasn't like pure bleaching my hair and then like um and then putting toners on and things i think it was more like the garnier like be like you know the holly willoughby style box hair dye um and i was using that quite a lot to get quite a bright blonde I, i'm going to try and include as many photos of this journey um over the years to try and help describe how things were so and then i started going to the hairdressers and i just wanted it as, as white blonde as i possibly could go um so I was paying to get it bleached and um, just painted on. There was no highlights. It was literally just painted from the root to tip with bleach um, and then toned by the hairdresser. My hair then was kind of starting to show signs of damage. Um, you know, it was starting to feel a bit dry, a bit brittle. It wasn't so much snapping off, but it was just got started to really dry out and I really needed to like straighten it down. Otherwise it would just look really frizzy. Then I decided that I wanted to dye my hair red now <laughs> this era of my life was when everybody was dyeing the hair red it was that rihanna rihanna dyed her hair red so everybody else dyed the hair red so that is how um i came to having red hair but i did not just have red and red hair it was like fire engine red um and i used to dye this i want to say every two weeks because again it was just box dyes but it was fading quite quickly so I, I and I really wanted my hair to be that really bright like bright red so I was dyeing it literally every two weeks to try and keep up with that like maintenance of keeping it so red and then and then after that I think that lasted maybe four or five months or something and then I decided that I wanted rid of the red but I didn't really think I could go blonde again from there so I decided to put a dark brown hair dye on um, so this dark brown kind of went like it did initially take but then as it was fading it was kind of going like a plum purple colour because obviously you still got the red on underneath um, and again my hair was just drying out and this was still box dyes this was just stuff that I was doing myself every time that this little plum colour came out I was dyeing it again to try and get rid of I thought I don't know why but in my mind I thought if I just keep dyeing it it will eventually just cancel out how wrong I was and how uneducated I was on the way that hair works um 
And then I think I had that colour hair for, it was quite a while to be fair, I want to say like maybe up to a year. And then I decided that I wanted to go blonde again. So I knew for a fact that I couldn't go from brown to blonde without the um, red still being there and it going kind of gingery. So from there, I decided to use a colour remover. So I just bought this from Boots, um, colour remover. I don't think I have any like proper photos of this. But the way that I can describe of the colour that my hair went was, do you know the inside of a Jaffa cake? That little orange like jelly part. It was that kind of colour. Um, and then I just thought, well, it's like ginger, so I'm going to bleach it. So bleached it. I think it was like twice in one week I bleached it. And this was when the damage like really, really started. Um, but I did manage to get it to quite a nice blonde, um, kept that for quite a long time. And then I guess this next part of the story kind of describes how impulsive I was with my hair without really thinking about the consequences of it. I had this mindset of like, you know, I knew for a fact that people like their hair snapped off and it was really damaging and this, that and the other. But I had that mentality of like, oh, it just won't happen to me. Um, so yeah, I had my blonde hair for a while. And then I decided I wanted to go dark again, but I didn't just want to go dark, I wanted to go jet black. With my ongoing kind of mentality of it's cheaper to do it from home, I bought a black box dye, um, dyed it multiple times over the course of, I want to say maybe it's two years actually, the black, the black hair lasted quite a long time. Um, I also had extensions in during this point, so I was kind of trying to do my roots around my extensions, but again I was just doing this all from home with box dyes. Then I decided I wanted to go blonde again. But I seem to remember, like, I never really wanted, like, any kind of in-between colour. I either want, like, the whitest of blondes or the darkest of darks. So that kind of, like, switch and my impatience for wanting it, because I did at this point actually go to a hairdresser and say, I want to go blonde again, what do I do? would it be easier to do it from home or like what should I do and the hairdressers all kind of told me that um it's not going to be a quick process which is true if you do it like a safe if you do it like a safe and healthy way where you're like with the least amount of damage they said it was going to take me possibly up to a year of gradually lifting it now because of my fear of first of all spending money on that kind of thing and um the fear of having that in between hair color that i did not want i decided okay then i'm gonna go home and bleach it again um so i i think i actually got another color remover first to try and get rid of as much of the black hair dye as i possibly could <laughs> looking back at this i think jess where was your brain when you were doing this? Because it wasn't that long ago. I want to say it was about five years ago I did this. Um, I bleached it three times in one day. Three times in one day because it was not going the colour that I wanted. Um, and this is where it all started to snap off. Um, I remember trying to dry my hair after like the second or third bleach. And it just wasn't drying because my hair was trying to lock in as much moisture as it possibly could because it was so dry and when I was pulling my hair it was like an elastic band if I pulled too hard it would definitely have snapped off but I tried so hard not to pull it um yeah and that's the point where I was like I need to leave my hair alone now um I kind of I've been blonde ever since but I've kind of like not gone to those extremes and I've been to hairdressers from now and just got my roots done and just tried to you know actually I think at that point actually was when I cut my hair off it was when I went really really short um because I thought well this part that's like so damaged and breaking off it's just gonna break off anyway I might as well just get it cut short and kind of start afresh and then that will be the healthier way of kind of trying to regrow my hair without like all the damage. So I cut all my hair off, had the short bob um, and kind of continued getting just highlights and going to the hairdressers. So that is kind of a catalogue of how I ended up with my hair in such bad condition and it was horrendous. Um, I, could, I never really wanted to wear it down, I always wanted it up um, because I could just kind of hide out the way. Um, when I put hair extensions in, because I used to have clip-in hair extensions, there was a definite like divide between the the condition of my hair and the extensions and they were just horrendous but yeah so that's kind of where i was at maybe three years ago 
So when I decided that I was gonna stop doing this at home, I then just kind of, I started putting on loads of hair masks, um, just trying to really like condition it, trying to limit the amount of heat that I was putting on, but I wasn't really limiting the amount of heat that I was putting on my hair like very much, but I was just kind of trying to kind of turn the straightness down a bit sort of thing. Um, because I was still at that point where I didn't really want to go out with it like without putting heat on it because I just it just didn't look the way that I wanted it to. So um, I put, so I decided to go for like regular haircuts. Um, I did keep that short bob for quite a while because I did quite like it. Um, so I kept the short bob. Um, I was putting loads of hair masks on, like I said, and then I made an investment into Olaplex. So I'd seen all these amazing hair transformations, probably on TikTok, I think. This was m maybe about two years ago. Um, and I thought, well, if I want healthy hair, then I'm gonna have to make an investment into it and it's gonna, you know, this will save my hair was my um, attitude towards it. I thought, well, I'm gonna invest and it will save my hair. And I'm not gonna lie, it didn't really do much for me, um, which I've now, since I've kind of said, Olaplex didn't work for me, a few other people have said, yeah, it didn't work for me either, um, which was really disappointing because I was expecting miracles off this stuff. So I was using that all the way up to about, I wanna say maybe about two or three months ago because I kind of thought I've gotta give it a chance. It's not gonna be some kind of miracle, like overnight change. So I thought I'll give it like a year. Um, so I gave it up to about a year and I still wasn't really seeing much difference. Like, yes, it was, you know, when I put the, um, like the hair mask treatment on, it was nice, but then it was just kind of going back to how it was beforehand. Um, like after just washing and I was using the, so I was using the shampoo and condition, the shampoo and conditioner. I used number zero, which was like a pre-treatment stuff, which by the way, was like i nearly gassed myself out so many times putting that on because it's strong stuff i nearly choked like literally choking on this stuff it's so strong um and then i used the number three which was like the hair mask and then the bonding treatment and then i used the oil so like every aspect of olaplex i tried i used for a long period of time and it just wasn't working the way that i was hoping it to now moving on to where i'm at now and what has really made the difference and what has really made a huge change in the quality of my hair and how i'm now looking after it so i actually spoke to my friend demi about it um before i started doing this kind of like treatments on it um, and I said how have you managed to keep your hair so nice and grow it so long like I really want to start looking after my hair like properly and I think Demi I think I recall Demi saying that she had used Olaplex and it wasn't that good for her either um, so she gave me some tips which I've been like I've been doing religiously and those things have really helped so the first thing is what i'm putting in my hair so in terms of tying it up i don't use elasticated hair bubbles anymore i use those you know like the you know like the plastic like spring style ones they're like curly so i use those ones now um because they're a lot less damaging on my hair but i only really use them if i really want to have my hair like secure and out my face um, but otherwise if I just want it up and I'm not too bothered I'll use a claw clip so those are the most like those are the least damaging things that you can put in your hair in terms of keeping it out of your face is the elasticator like the spiral plastic hair bubbles and claw clips so that's all I've been using in terms of when I tie my hair up so next tip that she gave me which I have been doing is that I only use heat on my hair when I wash it and then after that, that's it. So as you can see, like, I mean, I'm on like day three of my hair and I've got kind of little curly bits at the top, but I'm just kind of getting used to that now. It's just like, this is what my hair is now. And it's just one of those small sacrifices that I've got to make. If I'm not going anywhere, then I'm not really too bothered. Like if I'm not going out for dinner or whatever. Um, I only use heat on my hair. So blow dry and either curl or straighten when I wash my hair. And I only wash my hair twice a week. I actually didn't know for a long time that you shouldn't really wash your hair like all the time. Apparently washing your hair like every day strips it of its natural oils and strips the moisture out of it. So that really helped with kind of not wanting to put heat on it as much because I wasn't washing it all the time. The ultimate saviour that you have seen me use time and time again on my channel is, let me just grab them, is these babies. So in my last video, <laughs> In my last video I was a little bit um, stumped with what to do with this because these are the um, these are the products that kind of I've used from the beginning um, with this spout on them and then I got the larger one which had this and I was like I don't know if I like it 
But I just decanted it into the other one, as many comments told me to do. I don't know why my brain wasn't braining that day. Um, but that product I found on TikTok. It's a girl who started her own business because nothing was working for her in terms of hair care. And it's all natural ingredients, which I absolutely love. So there's no like weird chemicals and stuff in there. It's all natural ingredients. Um, and she's got loads of different ones. And she just started her own business and sells on TikTok shop. She's got her own website. It's called Hair Syrup. The ones I use, um, or the ones I was recommended to use by their little hair quiz that they've got on there was Grosemary and Vitamin C Me. Grosemary helps me with um, like hair growth, hair regrowth, um, which is why sometimes when I have little bits that stick up there, that's like all hair regrowth. It's like my little babies coming out the top of my head. <laughs> um, so, so Grosemary is for hair regrowth and the vitamin C me one is for brittle and breakage prone locks. So it re, so it basically helps you with the condition of your hair. And so these are actually pre-wash syrups. So I put these on before going in the shower. Um, you're supposed to leave them on for a minimum of an hour, but what I tend to do is the night before I know I'm gonna have a shower and wash my hair, I'll put them in, I'll, I'll put, I'll literally drench my hair in this syrup and then I'll put a towel over my pillow and I'll sleep with it on um, and then use a satin scrunchie which does come with the syrups when you buy them. So use a satin scrunchie and um, leave it on overnight to marinade and then I'll wash it off in the morning and my hair is feeling absolutely amazing and those have to be like the, the apps, I think those, those in particular are probably the one staple difference or the one thing that I can really, really pin this down on because they're just, I don't know, I don't even know how to des describe them or where this girl came up with these these um, concoctions, but they are brilliant. They are absolutely brilliant. I've seen so many people using these syrups and have amazing, amazing results from them. So I can't talk about them enough. But in terms of um, shampoo and conditioner, at the moment I'm using the hair burst ones. So I actually use the ones in the orange bottles. I think the ones, I have used hair burst before, but I'd only seen the ones that I'd like, that were like popular, um, which were the blue and pink bottles. But then I realized that they did ones which are in like peachy orange bottles, which are specifically for dry and damaged hair. So I bought some of those and I really like them. They seem to be doing a good job and in terms of after I wash, I always, always make sure that I use um, a heat protectant. At the moment, I'm using one from, uh, from Beauty Works. And then I use a leave-in conditioner. Let me just grab that, which is this one. I think you can get this from like Superdrug or Boots. And it is the Naughty uh, Intensive Care Leave-In Conditioner. And I just put this on before I dry it, along with the heat protectant, and then just dry my hair. And then I'll usually straighten it. Um, and then that'll be it until I next wash it. So that is kind of everything that I've been doing really with my hair at the moment. I do tend to tie my hair up in between washes. It's just, I just like it out of my face sometimes. And I think sometimes after like the first or second day, my hair doesn't really like look as nice down. So I do tend to tie it up with one of the little spiral bubbles, of course, um, or a claw clip. And um, yeah, that's kind of, everything that I've been doing, if I'm honest. So that's everything that I've been doing. I kind of find that this routine really works for me because you can just kind of do it. You're not going through any special measures to try and get to try and get this healthy hair. You can literally just pop on the stuff before you go to bed, pop the products in before you dry your hair. And it's just a case of switching up what you're doing in terms of tying your hair up if you want to tie it up. And that has really, really worked for me. And I can't believe that those two pictures are only 12 weeks apart. Like, I can't wait to see what my hair is like in like six months. So I'm really actually trying to grow my hair at the minute. I want it to be quite long, but I want it to be naturally long and not with extensions in. So yeah, that is kind of everything. I hope I've covered everything there. I feel like that's everything that I'm doing with my hair at the moment. Yeah, if you have any questions, I'm not a hairdresser. I'm not a specialist in this kind of thing. This is literally just what I've been doing over the last 12 weeks in particular to try and save my hair. So if you have any questions, I'll try and answer them as best I can. But if I can't, I'll let you know that I'm not quite sure and maybe to, to speak to a hairdresser about it. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and it has been somewhat informative. If you have enjoyed it, then please give it a thumbs up. Go hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I do upload next, then hit the bell as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Baby, let me love you, let me love you, let me love you, let me love you.